tonight on Living by Design. You got something else on? Lavender. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. calming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Well, look, I'm not leaving till you say yes. Living by Design with host Kathy Holloway Hill. Kathy is a strong, powerful voice. She entertains, informs, and inspires her audiences everywhere she goes. Kathy Holloway Hill and welcome to another empowering episode of the Living by Design show. I have a very special guest. She is my sister in Christ. She is a brilliant spiritual young lady. The only thing bigger than her talent is her heart, her spirit, and her soul. And I am so excited and so thrilled to have my sister in Christ today. Miss Victoria Christopher Murray, who is not only a best-selling author, but she has over a million books in print. And recently, a couple of her stories have appeared on Lifetime. Now, we're going to get into all of that, but I first want to welcome Victoria to my show. Welcome, 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 beautiful. Oh, thank you so much, Kathy. The best thing you said was this young lady. I haven't been called young in a long time, so I appreciate that. Oh, bless your heart. Well, you know what? You are young at heart. Yes, that's for sure. That's you are definitely. young at heart. You definitely are not a babe in Christ because I know you've been knowing Christ a long time because you and I actually interviewed when I was doing my radio show. Yes. And you have really grown have grown tremendously. Victoria, I have so many questions for you because you have just really taken off into the stratosphere. You're doing so many amazing things. So yeah. let, let's start from the beginning because you know I know you have a life story. We all have a life story. Start out by in, just introducing yourself to our viewers and talk a little bit about your beginnings, how you started, where did this passionate desire to write come from? Well, I have, well, first of all, thanks for having me again. And it is really good to see you after all these years. I have wanted to write my entire life. I think I told you that before. Um, I'm sure that when I came out of my mother's womb, I was ready to write. Um, and I wrote my very first masterpiece when I was seven years old. And a lot of people say, how could you write a masterpiece when you're seven? Well, you can when you plagiarize. I was seven and I wrote something called Betty and the Witch. And it was about a little girl who wore a red uniform with a hood to school. She had seven bears for brothers. She, I mean, she had three bears for brothers. And then she had three pigs for sisters. And then next door, seven little people live next door. And there was a good witch that came by her house and a bad witch that came by her house. So I just put it all together into one thing called Betty and the Witch. But my second grade teacher read it and the entire second grade performed it as a play. And what that teacher did for me was she validated my gift. I didn't know that's what was going on. But she, because I got to, she told me I could choose any role I wanted in the play since I was the writer. And then after the auditorium presentation that we did, she introduced all the, me to all the parents. I came on stage as the writer of the play. And, and so she encouraged me. And I remember a couple of years ago, I was saying to my mom, I wish I could find her. I still remember her name is Asnes because she really let me know that what I wanted to do, because I, was, I loved to read as a child, um, that I could be a writer. But the thing was, is as I was growing up, I never saw any writers that looked like me. I never really felt like 
writing could be a career. So I took, I always tell people when you're 17 and you're on your way to college, you do what you're supposed to do. And then when you turn 40, you do what you want to do. And so I went to college, majored in communications, didn't even make, do anything that had to do with writing, um, except I always did well in all my classes because I could write well. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I went and got my MBA and it wasn't until I got married right after grad school. And my husband who knew I wanted to write kept saying, you know, one day you are going to be 80 years old and you are going to be sitting on somebody's porch. And when you're sitting on somebody's porch, you're going to be saying, you wish you had written that book. And that scared me. And I always tell people, Kathy, that what happens when you have a dream like this is that your resistance and your desire start off here. And as we go through life, resistance become higher because life gets in the way, work gets in the way, everything gets in the way. Your resistance becomes higher. But when your desire becomes higher than your resistance, that's when you will move forward. And my husband scared me. That's how I decided to move forward. And I self-published my first book in 1997. Can you believe it's been that many years? Um, and the rest is history. It was picked, I self-published it. I was picked up by Time Warner. And two years later, I moved to Simon & Schuster and I've been there for the rest of my career. You know, that is an incredible story. And thank you so much for sharing it with my viewers because there are a lot of people who are listening to you right now where yeah. their resistance is a lot higher than their desire. Higher. They don't want to put in the work. They're afraid they're going to fail. I always say, you know, there is no failure. You know, either you succeed or you learn. Um, you and know, the thing I never wanted to do, Kathy, was to look back and regret that I didn't try that one thing. I didn't try the one thing that I wanted to do my whole life. So whether somebody's talking about being a writer or doing anything, um, we have a lot of excuses in that resistance column. You know, life, family, everything gets in the way. But Talk you're people telling you you can't do it. Can't do it. Everything is in that, comes into that column. But you have to find something that makes your desire greater than your resistance. Now, you were working a nine to five job throughout this, this part when you got your, your undergrad and then your graduate yeah, degree. My graduate. And for 16 years, I worked um, a nine to five job and did very well. I'd gotten my MBA from Stern in New York. So one of the top business schools, I was one of the only African-American women at that time um, who had gotten my MBA from Stern. And so I was doing really well in corporate America. And I always say that I did well also because I could always write. I could always make presentations. That's the thing that you need no matter where you go. But I wasn't doing what I wanted to do my whole life. And I just thank God that my husband was there every year to say, man, this is not what you told me you wanted to do. You know, and then you start making so much money and you don't want to, you know, take the risk and leave it. But because of him, he pushed me out there on that leg. Well, let me ask you this question, because now I'm remembering why you and I connected so well. When you were thinking about leaving corporate America, was your husband the only one that was helping to endorse that for you? Did you have other people saying, oh my goodness, you're making so much money. Why would you want to change that? Yeah, it was, it was my husband. My husband was the only one. Everybody else, even my parents were like, are you kidding me? And even when my husband was telling me to leave, I was saying to him, do you know how much money I make? You know, I was like, you but he was the one that, that did it. And that's why you and I connected because we had an identical story because, you know, I was in corporate America. And when we, when we spoke the first time, it just connected us and bonded us. And Victoria, you know, we have so much to talk about, but we have to take a quick break. Okay. And we're going to be right back with more of the incredible Victoria Christopher Murray. Hi, welcome back. We are still here with the queen of the writing world, Miss Victoria Christopher Murray. Okay, Victoria, we have got to get into envy and lust yes. and wrath. And, and okay, so yes. I have so many questions for you where this is concerned. First of all, are, are you and T.D. Jake's 
connected because I know he was part of that when he you was the executive producer of the movie. He okay. was one of the executive producers. Actually, Sean Robinson, who used to be the host on Access Hollywood, she was the one before I decided to write the Seven Deadly Sin series. Right. And I started with Lust. And before Lust even hit the shelves, um, the book editor at Essence, uh, Patrick Bash read it and called Sean Robinson because she had said she wanted to get into producing movies. And he said, I've been watching Victoria for 20 years. This is her most commercial book. If you want to get into the movies, call her. And, you know, there's there's no six degrees of separation. It's like two degrees of separation. And we ended up talking. And so she optioned them. And then she was the one who made the deal with T.D. Jakes and Lifetime because Lifetime wanted to work with T.D. Jake some more on some other films and um, he had just done Faith Under Fire with them and um, so they he said okay I got seven for you and I had only written one but by the time they went wanted to do the deal I had two I had In Lust and Envy and then they said for them to do the deal, they as long as I wrote Greed, they would do the deal for all seven. And that was amazing because I got an option on books that I hadn't even written yet. Wow. That was incredible. Yes. Um, you know, you don't have to tell us, but all I want you to, to let us know is was that deal lucrative for you? Yes, it, al it always is. It's good for writers. Okay. And the only reason I ask that because, you know, I know sometimes the contract can benefit the executive producer. It can benefit well, it the does. network. The well, network. Yes, they, they're the ones that make the most money. They they make the most money because they're taking the most risk. Right. Um, and so I what they're doing for me is purchasing the book and they still have to hire someone to write the script for the movie. Oh, they still have to hire all of that. So um, the writer of the book is never going to make as much as even the writer of the script uh, right. because minus the concept. But I was very pleased. I'm very pleased with um, what and they even gave me a consultant's credit. And I appreciate that as well. Awesome. Awesome. I tell you, I'm going to be perfectly honest. When I watched the first one, uh, Lust, Lust, I was hooked. I had no idea. It was, it was so good. good. They did such a good. Oh, you didn't know it was mine at that time? No. Oh. When I saw your name, I said, is this my girl? Oh, wow. So you didn't know. I thought you had watched I was so pleased. And well, you no, know, I didn't know. I mean, I watched the movie three times. Yeah, I love that. Lust, they did an amazing job. Incredible. I mean, Tank, they, they whoever did the casting, they did a, an incredible yeah. job of casting. Yeah, Fern Champion, she's a, a casting director who's been in Hollywood for a while. She did an amazing job casting because... Um, between Tobias and Kerry and Tank, they had incredible chemistry. And then even the peripheral characters, the best friends, yes. Sonia, played by Ray Camper. Yes. And um, the grandmother, wasn't the grandmother amazing? Oh, my God. Everybody said to me, oh, my goodness, I want that grandmother. I want that one. But I'm going to tell you the thing that just really threw me was not so much, you know, the lust, because it did say that's what... The Top title was, but it was the husband's background. Yes, yes. The well, successful that was, husband had all of that. He had all that. He came from the streets, and he just turned he turned his hustle into a real game. You know. Yes. Uh, into a legitimate. That's a great game. way to say it. Yeah, and so um, I, I, that was all in the book. They did an amazing job of staying close to the story that I wrote. Now, now you've got, um, okay, so we've seen Lust, we've seen Envy. Do you know when Greed and Wrath are going to? They're be working, released? yeah, they're working on that now. So um, I think- now That's that, four, what's the other three? Well, I'm working on Pride. I have on my I Am Writing shirt today because- oh, yes, I, yes, let's see your I Am Writing shirt. I Am Writing. So it wasn't that I didn't dress up. I did do, I, I put this on on purpose just for you. 
of the Am Writing shirt today because I need to be doing some serious writing. Um, because next is is Pride, and then pri I, after Pride, I'll probably do Gluttony and then Slaw. But I got all the good ones up front. What was that last one? Gluttony and slaw. then Slaw. Slaw. It's to be lazy. I don't even know what kind of oh, drama-filled story you can write right, right. with a lazy character, but I'm going to figure it out. Oh, if anyone can create <laughs> a incredible character, it would be you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Kat. Well, I tell you, you are my hero. I just, so many people are going to look up to you. So many people in my viewer viewing audience who probably saw the show and now they're seeing the face behind the masterpiece of a story. Your story writing is incredible. It always has been. I've loved your books for years and years and years, which is why I was so excited when I had a chance to talk to you years ago and you're still in the game and just absolutely killing it. I'm still and I'm so here. proud of you. I'm still here, you know, I, because this is what so many um, people came in with me who were far better writers than me um, and they're no longer here, but I just feel like this is my purpose. This was yep why I was created, and this is the purpose as I walk the earth, what I'm supposed to do. Do you ever think that you would want to be one of the characters in your movie? No, 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 I'm not, no. I don't, mind, I don't mind like sitting in a Starbucks or something, but I'm not trying. Oh, like, okay, like, a, like a, um, an extra? Like an extra, yes, I don't mind, but I'm not trying to act. Um, I would like to learn that business it, behind the camera, mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm not interested in acting. Okay, okay. I, I can totally understand that. It's a whole different world. I it's a it's whole a different world. And one of the things I like being about being a writer is for the most part, I can be anonymous, you know? Um, there's not a whole bunch of people in my business and, and, and everything. I can control what people know about me. Um, and so I like that as being a writer. You lose a lot of that anonymity when you're um, an actor. You know, everybody believes that they, that you belong, they belong in your life. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I am enjoying this so very much, but we're going to take a quick break. But I want you to show that shirt just one more time before you go to break. I am writing with, and it glitters. It glitters. I love that. I love that. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We are still here with the queen. And so, Victoria, we, we were talking uh, prior to the break. And I mentioned uh, if you thought you may ever want to act, and I, I totally understand that. You know, but one thing I wanted to say is that um, you mentioned that you didn't see anyone who looks like you, you know, writing. Now, for me, I know I saw a little bit from Terry McMillan, and I saw a little, uh, well, I've seen quite a bit from Kimberly Lawson Roby. But I don't even know, is Terry McMillan even still writing than Zane? I know yeah. you know Zane. Yeah. Well, what I was doing, what I did was when I was growing up, I didn't see anybody who looked like me. Okay. So I was a great reader, but I was reading white authors. And I, w I was in high school when the librarian um, gave me a book writ written. It was, um, the book said Native Son, and on the back was a picture of a black man. And I didn't even understand what he was doing there. And she told me, he wrote it. Richard Wright wrote the book. Um, because I hadn't seen, growing up I, in the 60s and the 70s, I hadn't seen any, you know, Black authors. And, um, well, I was, that was in the, in the early 70s when she gave me the copy of the book. And, you know, you're absolutely right. Because I'll tell you who was my absolute, and it wasn't even a, a, a female. It was a, a white man. And his name was Sidney Sheldon. Oh my goodness, I was talking about Sidney Sheldon the other day to another writer, to Rashonda Tate Billington. She hadn't read any of his books. I was like, you hadn't read any of his books? Sidney Sheldon was like the best. We read, I was telling her that when his books came out. Every single I, one of his oh, books was a movie. Every time his books came out, I was at the bookstore waiting for it on the day it came out. Me too. 
<laughs> but when I was telling her about Cindy Sheldon, she said, what did she write? I was like, oh no, that's <laughs> blasphemous. <laughs> it is. Oh my goodness. This man was amazing. I read every book he ever and read. And The Other Side of Midnight, as oh. you can see, I still remember that. It was the first one that I read. I don't know if it was his first book. Yeah. But that book, I read it 25 times. Yeah, I believe that. I, there wasn't a book of it. You know, now that you mentioned that, I might go back and read a couple of more, you know, because it's been a couple of years. Yeah, when I have I have it's a complete library. I right. mean, I, I paid a lot of money for it, and I said I will never let it go. I will never sell it. I don't care how much anybody offers me. Yep, I have a complete library, all hard books. Uh, all when he, hard when books. he passed away, I grieved. So did I, and I was. that's how we started talking about it, because, you know, we lost a couple of our writers, Eric Jerome Dickey and Elon Harris, and I was telling... Rashonda, that um, Cindy Sheldon was the first author who passed away that I felt like I knew. And I remember thinking all of those other stories were buried with him. Yes. You know, there was never going to be another new story from him. Yes. And that was hard for me to take. Right. And, and you know, um, one of the things I want to make sure that our viewers know is how incredibly successful you have been in the world of writing. You have done so much for our people and you've done so much for the world of writing. I get a little emotional sometimes mm -hmm. and I, I appreciate you and I love you so much, but the, the amount of awards that you have received, you've been nominated for NAACP awards. You've won NAACP awards. You, I mean, it's so many here. I, I, I just, you know, I, I can't even, I read them all. Blessed. I have been blessed. I've, I've won. I've been nominated five times for, for the NAACP Image Award and finally won once. I thought I was going to be Susan Lucci and never win. Just keep getting nominated. And then um, I've won so many. I've been blessed. African American Literary Awards. And those are where the readers decide who's the winner. So that means a lot to me. Um, I've just been really blessed. I won the Phyllis Wheatley Trailblazer Award for being a pioneer in African-American fiction. So I've been blessed and, you know, I, I have been able to give back, but that's because of so many people who gave to me when I started. Um, when I started, Elin Harris, Kimberla Lawson Roby, Eric Jerome Dickey, Lolita Files, it was like those, those, yeah, they came, they put their arms around me and me, because I was self-published and Kim was, but none of the others were. And they, but Kim already had her book deal and they all put their arms around me, this little self-published author and did everything that they could to help me become successful. So I get a lot of credit for giving back, but that's because so many people gave to me. Well, I have a lot of your books also. So, you know, um... I, I don't want to put anything out there, but when you're no longer with us, I will have my library of Victoria's books that I will never let go either. So no. you have inspired me. You've entertained me. I love fiction. I love self-help also because, you know, that's my, my area trying to help young people. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason I wanted to have you on today is so that you could inspire the young people out there to go after your dream and don't be afraid. Dream. I just don't want anyone to be 80 years old sitting on the porch. We don't right. want and, and you know what? If you're 80 years old, you're going to be 80 years old. So you might as well be 80 years old and have done what it is you want to do. You know, and make the attempt. Yes. And, when, and that's, the, that's, Kathy, the most important thing. Make the attempt. Because when I wrote that first book, Temptation, I didn't know where it was going to take me. I didn't know it was going to take me here. But when I was 80, I would never be able to say I didn't even try. Well, well, well I'm, I'm going to even do you one better than that. Who in the world at seven years old can put Little Red Riding Hood, The Three Little Pigs, With the three and little The Wizard of Oz together yeah. into a whole story? Who? Seven Years old, who does that? Pages, girl. I had the whole thing. I plagiarized everybody, everything. But it was your story. And yeah, it was a little bit of plagiarism, but it, you're seven, for God's sake. I mean, you don't know anything about that at, at that age. I've, I've learned a lot since then. I don't plagiarize anymore. Oh, you don't need to, honey. People are 
plagiarizing you. <laughs> but but let's talk about your uh, social media and upcoming projects. So I know this is definitely your biggest upcoming project. So, and I can't wait for the rest of the Seven Deadly Sin yeah. series. Yeah, so mm -hmm. actually to me, that's not, I'm so happy for the movies, but my biggest project is coming up next month. I, I co-wrote, um, a novel with a white author, a author, and it's a biographical novel, meaning it's a real person, Belle DaCosta Green, who was the personal librarian for J.P. Morgan, um, but um, the personal librarian for, for J.P. Morgan, and no one knew until she passed away that she was Black. Wow. Okay. So that's coming out June 29th. So we have that and we have the movies. And so I'm really happy. And so what are your social media handles? You can people... find me on Victoria Christopher Murray on anything. Victoria Christopher Murray on Facebook, Victoria Christopher Murray on Twitter, on Instagram. So those are the three that I do. Now, are you going to have a special page or a special Twitter account for the actual, the lust and greed? No, that's no. okay. okay. still under my name. That's all, all going to be up under you. Okay, you know, Victoria, it has been my absolute pleasure. I love you. You're incredible. I am so glad that God allowed our paths to cross because you, my dear, are just a blessing to the world. And thank you for giving us all that you have and all that you will continue to give. And thank you for having me. All right, absolutely. We thank you for joining us for this episode of Living by Design, and we will see you same time next week for another empowering episode. Good night, everyone.